Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihade Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihade Gopi Jana Palapa Giri Vada Dade Gopi Jana Palapa Giri Vada Dade Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachadi Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya <laughs> Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Pradhan Harshi Vasadi Gauda Bhakti Vindu Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopakopana Shamakun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadrip Dham Ki Jai Ganga Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakti Vindu Ki Jai All Glories to the Assembled Devotees all glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to the symbol devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Sri Lanartam Das Thakur's appearance day, Ki Jai. <coughs> so today is the appearance of Sri Lanartam Das Thakur. So I'll just, I'll just read a little bit about him. Appearing as the son of a king, Sri Narutam Das Thakur, Sri Thakur Mahashai, showed all the bodily symptoms of a Mahapurusha, an exalted divine person. He had long arms, a deep navel, golden complexion, beautiful eyes shaped like the lotus petals. In school, he was a Shrutidara, able to memorize whatever he hears. Although he quickly mastered Sanskrit and the Vedas, he hankered to serve Krishna. He was a lifelong brahmachari. By the mercy of the holy, na of the holy name, Gornitai, Narutam became detached, left his opulent family, and ran to Vrindavan. He took Diksha from Sri Lokanath Goswami and Shiksha in Gaudiya philosophy from Jiva Goswami. Sri the Jiva Goswami. When he arrived in Navadvip Dham, all the devotees asked him about the health and activities of the Goswamis in Vrindavan. They were eager to hear the news from Vrindavan. After visiting all of Ganga's pastimes, pla pastime places in Gormandala, Narutam Das did the same in Ch Sri Chaitra Dham, Jagannath Puri. 
Then he went to see the devotees in Sri Chaitanya's pastime spots in Shantipur, Sri Kandak, Kantak Nagar, Ekachakra, and Keturi, Gram. In Keturi, Sri Narutam Das Thakur arranged the famous Keturi Mahotsava. This was the first Gaur Purnim festival to honor the divine appearance day of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. During the festival, six deities were installed. Shri Garangadev, Shri Vallabhi Kanta, Shri Vraja Mohan, Shri Krishna, Shri Radha Kanta, Shri Radha Raman. With his sweet voice, Nartam Das began thank you, a wonderful kirtan. His chanting filled the heavens and brought down tears of prem from the eyes of the devotees who were all sporting in the ocean of ecstasy. In the midst of their kirtan, the munificent Sri Chaitanya himself and all his personal associates appeared and joined in the sankirtan. Like a flash of lightning in the midst of a mass of beautiful blue clouds, Sri Chaitanya himself appeared in the crowd of devotees through a divine manifestation. At that time, Although Mahaprabhu had left this world years before, many different devotees saw Mahaprabhu in different ways. Those of Sri Navadvipa Dham saw him more intimately as Nimai Chandra or Vishambar, as they knew him during his youth. Those devotees were attracted to Mahaprabhu and Sakya and Vatsalyaras. The followers of the six Goswamis, who only knew Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi, related to him in the mood of Dasyaras. And hundreds of devotees also worship Lord Chaitanya in an Aishwarya mood of awe and reverence. This festival is considered a major achievement in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Hundreds and hundreds of devotees were invited, including direct disciples of Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, and Advaita Charya. At this time, many differences existed in, in the interpretation of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Acharya, Rani, Janavi Devi, came from Kardaha with her entourage. Presiding over all the Vaishnavas, she resolved their diverse conclusions into one consistent Gaudiya Vaishnav philosophy. For the first time, the festival featured many kirtan styles which integrated the glorification of Lord Chaitanya with the glorification of Lord Krishna and his pastimes. And because so many Vaishnavas were present at one place, it automatically made the Kateri um, festival extraordinary. It also acted as an important step toward unifying all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Naritam Das Thakur wrote many devotional songs about the spiritual master, the devotees, devotional service, the six Goswamis, Gornitinanda, and Radha Krishna. Although composed with sweet Bengali melodies and simple Bengali language, Naritam Das Das's songs give Shastrik Siddhanta and devotional inspiration. Srila Prabhupada often sang these bhajans, considering them non-different from Vedic Shastra. He quoted them in his Bhagavatam lectures. Prarthana and Prem, Prem Bhakti Chandraka are Naratam's most famous works. We sing a song every day from Prem Bhakti Chandraka, Sri Guru Charana Padma Guru Puja. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Premi Bhakti Chandraka. Yeah. So, Srila Prabhupada's favorite song is um, he was asked by Yamuna Devi, and, and Srila Prabhupada said that this song from Prartana, Ishta Devi Gyap. The prayer to one's beloved Lord was his favorite song. So we could just read that. We have it here. Oh Lord, Lord Hari, I have wasted my life. All I have taken this rare human birth, I have not served Radha and Krishna, and thus I have, I have knowingly drunk poison. The treasure of divine love in Goloka Vrindavan has descended as the congregational chanting of the Lord's holy names. Why did my attraction for that chanting never come about? Day and night my heart burns in the fire of the poison of worldliness, and I have not accepted the means for relieving it. 
Lord Krishna, the son of the king of Raj, became the son of Shachi, and Balaram became Nitai. The holy name delivered all those souls who were lowly and wretched. The two sinners, Jaga and Made, are evidence of this. O Lord Krishna, son of Nanda, accompanied by the daughter of Rishabhanu, please be merciful to me now. Naratam Das says, O Lord, please do not push me away from your reddish lotus feet. For who is my beloved except for you? So there's some recordings of Prabhupada singing that. All right, a few more paragraphs. The following excerpt comes from Premi Bhakti Chandrika. Radha and Krishna are my goal in life and death, and they are the masters of my breath. Performing my bhajan only for them, I rise and fall in the ocean of Prem. I pray that I can always maintain this conception within my heart as my highest ideal. Let me serve the lotus feet of Radha Govinda. Let my mind be filled with de dedication to their divine forms that defeat the beauty of Cupid and Rati. With a straw between my teeth, I fall at their divine feet and present my humble appeal, O Kishore Kishori, O son of Nandamara, Shamasundar, and O daughter of King Vrishabhanu Shiradha, you enchant even Hari, and your body complexion is the color of a golden lotus. O Krishna, with a bodily color like an Indanila gem, blue jewel, your beauty marks, uh, mocks Cupid. O topmost dancer, Sri Radha and Sri Krishna, please dance within my mind. O you whose beauty increases the charm of your dazzling ornaments, day and night I wish that I shall go on singing your glories in great ecstasy. Nartam das serves Srimati Radhika as Chamaka Manjari. So, for more information about Srila Nartam das Thakur, there is a book written by, uh, what is it, Sitala? Sit yeah, Sitala Dasi. And uh, that book is entitled, is it? Trivita Prabhu? What, what's that book entitled from Naratam Das Thakur by Sitala? Uh, Anyways, it's Naratam Das Thakur's biography. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I was just. Um, but yeah, for more information, uh, you could read that book. It's up in the ashram. It's like a reddish book. So. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Fifth Canto, Entire the Creative Impetus, Chapter 13, Rahugana Converses with Jed Bharat, Text 12. Quachit. 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 Just joking. <laughs> China, Danus, Tu, Tasmin, Shayasana, Stana, Vihara, Hinaha, Yachan, Parad, Apratilabda, Kamaha, Parakya, Drishtir, Labhyate Vamanam Quachit Quachit Jina Danas Tutasmin Shayasana Stana Vihara Hinaha Yachan Parat Apratilabda Kamaha So for the um Dravidic Prabhu, for the first you see th there's the kama ha, huh, right? No, but it's not kama. But it's just kama, yeah. right? Because it's the third line. Yeah. 
So the first and the third line are not, and it's not pronounced. Yeah. Yes, Hinaha. Not Kamaha, but Hinaha. Because sometimes, anyways. Parakya drishtir labhyateva manam. Quachit quachit china danas tu tasmin. Shayasana stana vihara hinaha. Yachan parat apratilabda kama. Parakidrishtir labhyateva manam. Quachit quachit china danas tu tasmin. Shayasana stana vihara hinaha. Yachan parad apratilabda kama. Parakidrishtir labhyateva manam. Quachit, quachit, sometimes. China Danaha, becoming bereft of all riches. Two, but Tasmin in that forest. Shaya, of bedding for lying down. Asana, of a sitting place. Stana, of a residential house. Yahara, of enjoyment with a family. Hinaha, being bereft. Yachan, begging. Parat, from others, friends and relatives. Apratilabdakamaha, not getting his desires fulfilled. Parakyadrishtihi, becomes greedy for the wealth of others. Labdite, lab, labhate, he obtains a vamanam dishonor. Translation, the commentary by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. On the forest path of material existence, sometimes a person is without wealth, and due to this, does not have a proper home. Yeah, that's <laughs> very common these days, right? Bed or sitting place, nor proper family enjoyment. He therefore goes to beg money from others. But when his desires are not fulfilled by begging, he wants to borrow or steal the property of others. Thus he is insulted in society. Purport. 
principles of beg, borrow, or steal are very appropriate in this material world. When one is in want, he begs, borrows, or steals. If begging is unsuccessful, he borrows. If he cannot pay, he steals. And when he is caught, he is insulted. This is the law of material existence. No one can live here very honestly. Therefore, by trickery, treating, begging, borrowing, or stealing, one tries to satisfy his senses. Thus, none, no one in this material world is living peacefully. So I'll just read one more. Due to monetary transactions, relationships become very strained and end in enmity. Sometimes the husband and wife walk on the path of material progress, and to maintain the relationship, they work very hard. Sometimes due to scarcity of money or due to diseased conditions, they are embarrassed and almost die. Purport. In this material world, there are many transactions between peoples and societies as well as between nations, but gradually these end in enmity between the two parties. Similarly, in the marriage relationship, monetary transactions are sometimes overpowered by the dangerous conditions of material life. One then becomes diseased or mo monetarily embarrassed. In the modern age, most countries have developed economically, but due to business exchanges, relationships seem to be strained. Finally, wars are declared between nations, and the result, and as a result of these upheavals, there is destruction all over the world, and people suffer heavily. Oh my God, it's been done. This year, God, I'm gonna show up. I'm gonna check you. I'm gonna tell me. I'm gonna test my Shri Guru. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna do what you're doing. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna bond it. Shri Guru, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Pancha kapadri bhishta kripa sindhu beva cha patitanam pavani bhyo vaishnu vebhyo namona maha jaya shri krishna chaitanya prabhanita ananda shri advaita gadadha shri vasadi gaura bhakta vinda hare krishna hare krishna Do you think you could on that um, going up the stair? There's, neck. There's a book there. So there's a philosopher. I guess he's considered a philosopher, um, because I think he's going up the staircase. It's just right there on the hooks. Um, but there's a philosopher. And he, his philosophy, it's just it's it's sense gratification. It means, of course, there's many philosophers whose <laughs> whose whose uh, ultimate conclusion. No, we lost Tyler, huh? Ultimate conclusion is sense gratification. And in different places, in different times, in 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 history, there's different. Um, you could say levels of sense gratification or different types of sense gratification that people would philosophize about. Um, I mean, commonly is, which we'll be hear, hearing more in the following um, following verses, is commonly is, is sex. That's a common uh, thing people want to <laughs> philosophize about or make a philosophy how that's the goal, right, to have sex, um, which is a type of sense gratification. But anyways, this particular philosopher, he wasn't talking about that. But Sri Sh the Prabhupada commented on, on people trying to philosophize about sex. He just said it was silly or, or foolish because if people want to just... Um, engage in sense gratification, e eating, sleeping, mating, defending, and live like animals or live like polished animals, then they should just, they could just do that. It's a free world. But to write all types of books and philosophize about it, he's silly. Um, but this philosopher, Charvak Muni, he said his thing was ghee. He really liked to ghee, um, clarified butter, which uh, upon getting, um, yeah, obviously he would eat that butter or that ghee. So he would say, "Beg, borrow, or still, but you have to get, um, have to get ghee." 
that was his philosophy. Um, now what happened to Tyler? Because I asked him, do you think you could get a book that's on the staircase? I think I said the staircase, right? But then he kept on walking up. But where did he expect the book to be? Do you think? Is checking with Mel? Checking his mail? What does that mean, checking his, like his email? All right. Well, maybe you could go and get him, but you also can't become distracted. You have to come back, even if you're not. And come back means not at the end of the class, but like quick. <laughs> and if he doesn't come, then you could just come, right? <laughs> We're going to lose a whole. <laughs> It was half of the class like this, right? Go on a, go on a, um, what do you call when somebody's lost? Uh, they go searching for somebody. What is that called? Search party, yeah. Send out a search party. <laughs> um, so beg, borrow, or still, you have to get ghee. So this is a principle of it doesn't really matter how you get your sense gratification. Just get it, right? Which nowadays... It, um, like people used to be very, cons like sometimes, like br like brahmacharis and the brahmacharis are like, okay, okay, now it's time to leave, I'm going to go get married. Now a lot of people, when they leave a, um, a particular group, or you could say a particular situation, a lot of the times, you know, they're not going to get married, they're just going out to, you know, gratify their senses. Like I was thinking a few days ago, we read a verse, <laughs> about all this sense gratification. I was saying, oh, it sounds like PB, <laughs> this particular verse. Let's see. Anyways, whatever. It was, um, it was uh, 10, if you remember that. Sounds like PB. But, um, but nowadays, the institution of marriage uh, is becoming more and more old-fashioned, becoming more and more seen as a nuisance, as a useless thing. Um, of course, it's still there throughout the world, but... And Srila Prabhupada uh, commented about that. He said that he, there's a saying, and the saying is, um, if milk is available in the market, what's the use of keeping a cow? Mean it means if people could get sense gratification without the institution of marriage, what's the use of marriage? Um, what happened? So car trouble? Oh, okay. How did he how did he know that there was car trouble? Just checked his phone. That's why Bhajan Ryan Swami says, in his talks, he says, turn off your phone, the bad news will be there after the class, when you turn on your phone. Huh? Oh, I have it. Yeah. Um, I heard that Sri the Prabhupada said, I don't, I'm not sure, I haven't read it, so... I'm not, and I don't, I'm not remembering where I heard it exactly, but in some ways Prabhupada saying this would, I mean, it, it does make sense, but because Prabhupada, when he was taking prasadam, he was honoring Krishna's prasadam, food offered to Krishna, and he, and he would tell the devotees, um, unless it's worth a million dollars, don't interrupt me. <laughs> don't, you know, don't knock on the door. Um, don't interrupt me, because Prabhupada, the, the pers they would bring the prasadam. Prabhupada would take prasadam a little different than some um, people do, you know, because some because a kind of a traditional way is that you, you sit down and then they gradually serve you slowly. They serve you different preparations, and when you need something, you you call. But most of the time, Srila Prabhupada would take prasadam. They would just put it all on a plate 
bring it into his room, and he would sit down and take prasadam. Of course, Prabhupada would call for chapatis and this and that, but if he needed something else. But um, so he would say, don't interrupt me unless it's worth a million dollars. So in many ways, I, 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 that's a good, I mean, it's a great principle to follow um, because there's always something to do. I mean, um, Vijay Prabhu or Trivita Prabhu or many devotees, um, they could be doing many different things besides sitting in, in, the, in, in the Bhagavatam class, right? But um, as a matter of principle, as a matter of um, because Prabhupada wanted it, then, then they do it. Um, and they don't, you know, um, get absorbed in other things. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, beg, borrow, still you have to get ghee. So this is greed principle. You have to get sense gratification somehow or other. So that's how we should feel about Krishna consciousness. We have to um, become greedy to obtain it, or else it's unattainable. It's too difficult, it's too lofty, it's too high of a goal to obtain without being greedy for it. And that's what Krishna Bhakti Rasi, what is it? Krishna Tamati, yeah. Tatralaulam, this greed. So this, uh, so Krishna consciousness is available for one who is greedy. It can't be achieved by so many other different methods. Um, and how do we become, uh, how do we become greedy for it? Well, we have to understand the importance of it. People who understand the importance of something or the so-called importance of something, they become very enthusiastic about it. Um, just like Amogalila was talking about his father going to school to become a doctor, working like a working like a donkey, right? I'm not just saying that because it's your father. I like your father, but working like a donkey to become a doctor. And that's what you have to do. You can't just, oh yeah, I want to become a doctor and just kind of like sit back and all right, now it's time to sleep, you know. You have to work really, really, really hard. Practically, I mean, maybe you don't have to work so hard as your father did. He would maybe kind of push in it, but he was saying he was, his father was working to the point of becoming sick, like physically sick. Um, because in his mind, his father's mind, he was understanding the importance or based on the desire, his particular desire of wanting to achieve something he was striving for. He was greedy to achieve it. So if we understand the importance of something, or the so-called importance of something, we become very enthusiastic about it. Um, and therefore, Srila Prabhupada's books are there, lectures are here, because we're trying to understand the importance of it, of something. And that is uh, Krishna consciousness. But even, even understanding the importance of something is not good enough, because we have to control our mind and senses. And I have a question for the younger devotees. What is, what is the value of controlling our mind and senses? Why is it helpful? Like, why are we stressing it so much? Yes. If we don't, we will be taken away from Krishna's service. We control them so we could use them in Krishna's service. All right, any other? Ideas? If you don't control the senses, the senses will control us. Well, what's wrong with that? What's the problem with that? What do you think? Degrade to animalistic life. <laughs> All right. You say, what's wrong with that? <laughs> that's, that's what everybody else is doing, right? Um, you go to hell. Okay, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> Suffer, right? No one wants to suffer. Um, so, so Srila Prabhupada mentions about controlling the senses in Nective Instruction uh, Preface. He says, very interesting, he says an interesting thing here. He said, in all spiritual affairs, so 
as especially those living in the temple and even those living outside the temple, practicing Krishna consciousness, we should try to make all of our affairs spiritual, like really spiritual, not, not spiritual, but spiritual. So in all spiritual affairs, one's first duty, one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. So that's our first duty. Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Make no advancement in spiritual life. Um, and then he says, everyone within this material world is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to the platform of goodness, satvagun, by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami. And then everything concerning how to make further progress will be revealed. Advancement of Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. Um, so, for example, chanting 16 rounds. Um, somebody, we have to control our minds in order to do that. Actually, if somebody really doesn't have control of their mind and the senses, they can't chant 16 rounds. It's impossible. But someone would say, hey, I'm chanting 16 rounds. Okay, but to the degree we control our mind and, and senses, to that degree we could actually properly chant 16 rounds. means with attention. Because when we talk about controlling our mind and senses, we're talking about attention. That's what it means to control the mind and the senses, to, 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 to focus them. Um, or reading through the Prabhupada's books. Uh, for example, Dimitri, he just finished the first canto. That's good. <laughs> He's got to keep on going. <laughs> um, did you finish the Bhagavatam? Yes? Not yet. Almost. Eleventh canto? Tenth canto? Okay, it's tenth canto. So he's made it up to the tenth canto, Mogalila, right? He has to keep on going. But in order to keep on going, right, one's on the first canto, one's on the tenth canto, or whatever cantos we're on, reading, we have to control our mind and senses. It means, okay, I have to read. But again, even while reading... <laughs> We have to control our mind and senses because the mind and senses could be thinking about so many things, right? Oh, maybe you're reading Srimad Bhagavatam and you know what? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just leave the temple. <laughs> I'm really dissatisfied. Okay, let me focus. In Vrindavan, there's this title by which the director of each temple is known. One who, maybe I should just leave Krishna conscious. I'm just really disturbed and, you know, this person said that. And, or whatever, you're thinking about somebody's Prabhupada comments about that there's something about, I don't know, conjugal rust or something, and then you start thinking, or there's some section of uh, what we're reading about Purva or something, and there's some descriptions of, of uh, what's her name? <laughs> or or uh, Irvasi or whatever her name was in the past time. Because <laughs> there's some descriptions in the Bhagavatam which are a little... Um, you know, graphic or stimulating, and start thinking, oh, that's why Srila Prabhupada said persons have to be careful while reading about Rasa Leela and so on, because then they just start thinking about their mundane affairs. Confirmation, right? Yes. You want to? Was, I was hearing in a lecture. Um, from His Holiness Bhakti Vikasami. Um it was um he was speaking to one of his god brothers, um, disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And um he left left Iskon. Um and he was saying that his reason for leaving Iskon is that he he was reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um but while reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, these graphic descriptions they, you know they awaken some lusty desires in his mind and he went to uh, to Osho's camp so that he oh, could really? have unlimited sex. Really? Yeah. Wow. Really amazing. <laughs> Another thing you might, in this regard, Devan Swami said, if you're reading Tenth Canto, you know, Chris Damaris passed on, and you start thinking about your past activities, close the book, go to the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Good instruction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Otherwise, yeah. the mind just keeps going. You just yeah, yeah, because the, the yeah the point is to focus on Krishna, but then if we start focusing on our on of ourselves or bodies or the bodies of other sense gratification, then it's completely missing. We're missing the point there. So yeah, best to be honest and just. So so yeah, we have to control our mind or on book distribution. I mean, we have to control our mind. It's it's like sounds you know. We're on Harinam or something. We're all doing Harinam and then down in downtown or someone. And like, hey, that's a nice, that's a nice pair of shoes. And that, I mean, someone may think that you know, whatever you know, thoughts come. But to go in there during Harinam and start shoe shopping and you know, or well, those smell like some really good you know chocolate chip cookies. And then to go in there, hey, let's let's do a detour, Harinam detour into the cookie shop. So it requires some control of our mind and uh, senses and all the activities of Krishna. So the morning program, for example, it could be seen as tough because, you know, some people think it's long, you know, 4.30 to 8.30. Um, or for whatever reasons, people might think it's tough. But um, if we're able to control our mind and senses to the degree which we could just engage in it, fully and I feel bad in many ways because um, I'm on of course it's nice for me that I'm on the altar but I can't be here to set an example so it's hard for me to um, I'm here but I'm, I'm I'm actually in the temple room I'm not upstairs sleeping but I'm but I'm dressing the deities and by the time I'm done everybody's um, upstairs or you know here or there or whatever they're doing so I mean it's a good example um, in the sense that I'm not <laughs> sleeping but um, it'd be nice if I was able to be here chant with the devotees but so um, but if we're able to focus our mind especially on those 16 rounds as Vaishesh Kaprabhu was mentioning the other day in that initiation talk, the spiritual master asked us to do one thing, chant 16 rounds. Just one thing. A vow. Yeah, he vows, we take a vow to do one thing, chant 16 rounds. He asks us to do many things. He asks us to do many things, but he, but he, uh, we make one vow to do one particular thing, and that is chant 16 rounds. Of course, not do, you know, the four sinful activities but um, because by that by doing that everything else will will be successful um, by doing that nicely everything else will be successful book distribution just like they asked Sovas Prabhu I believe in that nectar of book distribution they said oh how do you have a successful day on book distribution and he said well it starts in the morning and he said you have to be able to con you have to be able to Control your mind and senses and chant Hare Krishna very seriously, very sincerely, that two-hour period. That's where it starts. And if you're able to do it, c conquer your mind then, <laughs> then on book distribution, uh, book distribution will be successful. And Srila Prabhupada also mentioned that too. He said, um, they asked him, how do we increase our book distribution? He said, you sit down, you chant 16 rounds uh, for com complete 16 rounds, and that will help. It will increase book distribution. One devotee was given a class, and he said, "Well, I can't do that. You know, I, I, it takes me longer to chant. In the morning program, we only have two hours, and sometimes I have to do DD backup." Okay, fine. If you can't do, do it completely, then f the principles there as much as possible, right? Um, so, or else our minds will just like wreck us ultimately ruin us um just like i was and we'll end here but i was hearing how there was this man and he was attached to a woman go figure <laughs> <laughs> and women attached to men and homosexual men t attached to men whatever all types of attachments going on but this particular man was attached to a woman Go figure. Um, 
And what happened? She left him. Go figure. There's lots of science, lots of songs about it. She left me, he left me, whatever. So she left him. On a side note, there's this song Kevin brings up often. And it was this, he says, um, so this song, this guy's singing to his girlfriend. And he's saying, like the, like the chorus part is, I'm only human. Means that while you were gone, I cheated on you. But, you know, I'm only human. So, you know, please forgive me. You know. And then she responds in the song, and she, she says, she starts singing, Oh, I'm also only human, because when you were gone, I cheated on you. So, anyways, Hare Krishna. But, um, so anyways, this woman, she left this man for another man. Um, and then this man, for like 30 years, Straight, unbelievable. Thirty years, lamented. Yeah, he was the one who left. Who was left? He would pull out pictures of her and show people. Oh, look how beautiful she is! And and he would he lamented for thirty years. Also, in um, what, with his lamentation and showing pictures of this woman who left him thir for thirty years, he was drinking a lot of alcohol as well and being very depressed. But you just see the power of, of the mind. And sometimes we may think, oh, this guy has really lost control of his mind, right? Like we had, you know, whatever devotees are dealing with somebody who's losing control of their mind and senses. And you say, this person really lost it. Well, the potential is there for us as well. The potential to become like that is there, and the potential to become... Uh, extremely elevated is there that's the it could go both ways so so therefore day by day we control our mind we control our senses we chant Hare Krishna we engage in devotional service so we could go this way <laughs> so does anybody have any uh, I think Govardhan has a question or Dravida Prabhu you have a yeah, comment I wanted to point this out um, many of you may have and some of you may not have heard of this whole issue that's been going on for like 30 years or more of the changes in the books oh uh, yeah so while you were reading the the, the uh, purport to this to 13 i was reading from the uh, database and i said what is this because what you were reading was a lot different from what's here mm. and there was a, there was a significant adjustment that was made to this purport mm. unfortunately this edition doesn't you know they don't incorporate them so th but what, what about is that is the new one that was printed in germany or those are those incorporated they, they may have it i'm not sure okay but anyway i'm just going to read the first cut two sentences okay first of all the the, the the second verse that you read is all about monetary relationships yeah how they sometimes become strained and then it goes to the husband and wife and then uh, like that. So here's the, here's the first two sentences as, as, as it was, because I have the, the old one too, which you read. In the material world, there are many transactions between peoples and societies as well as between nations. But gradually, these end in enmity between the two parties. Similarly, in the marriage relationship, monetary transactions are sometimes overpowered by the dangerous conditions of material life one then becomes diseased or monetarily embarrassed. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's way less than what Prabhupada said. The point is, we went back to the original. So what the original says is, now listen to the difference. I'll just read the purport part. In this material world, there are many transactions between peoples and societies as well as between nations, but gradually these end in enmity between the two parties. That's the same. Now listen. Similarly, in the marriage relationship, Gradually, one becomes overwhelmed by the same monetary transactions, and one becomes so afflicted by diseases or other dangerous conditions of material life that one almost dies. Are you reading? Did you, did you hear that? You didn't hear that, right? Did you, are you reading along, Balaram? Yeah, it's not here. It's not there? Yeah. So why that was so clipped to really become practically meaningless, I don't know. But the other mystery is why they're keeping it this way, you know? Yeah. These have to be fixed. 
Is the book changes a thing in India or is it just America? Or is it around the world or people? Is it just like America? Because there seems to be a heavily, it seems that it's mostly Prabhupada disciples who are, who are concerned about the book changes. There's, they're getting some others, it seems, but mostly Prabhupada disciples. And it seems like a lot of Prabhupada disciples are in America, you know, on the West Coast also. And but throughout the world, I mean, there are also other Prabhupada disciples around. But you got Alachua, you got Southern California. There seems to be a lot. Like in New Zealand, David Ritaswamy said, there's like two Prabhupada disciples in the whole country, you know. Um, so, but is it a problem in India? Is it a problem around uh, the world, or? Yeah. Hmm. Mostly what you what we're reading is the seventy two Bhagavatam. When we were able finally to get our American European edition, which has been printed, I think many of these changes will be inco- have been incorporated, hopefully. Yeah. Anyways, all right. Any other uh okay we have Govardhan, you have something? Thank you, Bon. You mentioned someone was thinking about the partner 30 years after the breakup. Yeah. It reminded me of this young man that I met at Bobo Park. He came to the lounge and, um, yeah, he hasn't gotten over the heartache of his 10 uh, year old or 10 year uh, heartbreak from his girlfriend. Oh, really? 10 yeah, years? 10 years. And he, he was telling me in order to cope with that loss, he's trying to sleep with as many women as he can. Well, maybe he should turn towards God, not, 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 not the bod, right? Don't sin, you can't win. Love God, not the bod. Chant Hare Krishna. Yeah, people they're trying to and still his he's dealing with that heartache, but and, and people are really lost. All right. The verse I got here. Are you going to ask a question too? Okay, this is just the, the one thing. We, we had, uh, I think in the class I gave, I quoted these verses from one from Peel David, one from uh, Krishna in the 11th canon, practically identical. There's nothing that produces. That, that produces as much pain and it, what is it and as much bondage as attachment to women or, tho- or or those who are attached to women so here you we saw the illustrations are 30 years 10 years and and i th- i think a lot of the we call them karmis or a lot of the non devotees they know this i think they know it but you know they have a saying you can't live with them can't live without them type of yeah. So. Oh, yes. Many suicides also from this pain. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, thank you for the class today. Um, needed to hear this. Um, I was reflecting that um, b- to control the mind and senses, one needs to be in the association of those who can who are like terminal in that sense, that they are able to, uh, to, to a great extent, control theirs. So in their association, we can control ours. However, um, it seems like those happen in bursts. You associate, you get some inspiration, and then, and then, it, became, and then it becomes a little mundane, fall, then again you need the association, and then it's like a up and down, up and down process. And somehow it seems that the the reason we we lose that inspiration is because we become familiar with the devotees, we commit offenses. So um, it's this up and down of, oh, I took association of someone who can control their senses, then I committed offenses, fell down. 
it's up and down so how can we stop that offense making mentality because that it seems is blocking our ability to control our senses well sometimes we may not be able to immediately get free from the offensive mentality because getting free from the offensive mentality um you know requires purification because you can say why 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 are we being offensive like why are the why are the you know out and out demons offensive to Krishna? Well, their consciousness is completely um, you know covered over. So does it? To, so to the degree our consciousness becomes cleansed, to the degree we could see ourselves properly, see each other properly, see Krishna properly, right? Means interact in a right way. So um, in the meantime, we should try to understand, uh, yeah, the basic principles of Vaishnava etiquette. That's why Vaishnava etiquette's there. Because even though it may seem uh, unnatural to act in a certain way, means according to Vaishnava etiquette, still if we learn it and we act in that way, it actually protects us from committing offenses. And also, as Sri the Prabhupada mentions here, coming to the mode of goodness. Um, once and Jimna Swami and His Holiness Giraj Swami, they're having a little meeting with the Brahmacharis in Laguna Beach, an impromptu meeting <laughs> about Brahmach- Brahmachari life. So, in Jimna Swami was saying many different things um, he thought was helpful for uh, maintaining Brahmachari life, preaching, studying. And, and His Holiness Giraj Swami said one thing. Um, he said that he said that the brahmachari should uh, live in the mode of goodness because by living in the mode of goodness uh, they'll actually respect people means other devotees and people and uh, which <laughs> people are also obviously um, it means all different types of people um, and in that way we'll actually get their blessings um, because if we have a bunch of people that are uh, not happy with us, we're, we're kind of, we're not getting their blessings. And then, then life becomes more difficult. So anyways, that's another thing. Um, so to live in the mode of goodness, to follow Vaishnava etiquette. Yeah. And ultimately to become purified. And to serve those who are purified. If we're not purified, you know, to that level, we, we serve those. That's why traditionally brahmacharis would travel with sannyasis. Because the idea is sannyasis are um, meant to be more advanced and more fixed. And by the brahmacharis serving the sannyasi, they become more fixed. So, so we could also try to do that. Good experience. We could discuss more too. I think we better. Grantrachimad Bhagavatam ki jai.